I'm not an attorney. I'm not an accountant. I'm giving advice based on my experiences and successes. And by the time this presentation is done, you may be looking for a lobotomy. We're going to get a little crazy tonight. Let's get on with it. Say hello to my little friend, aloe vera. About 20 years ago, I saw this guy on a YouTube video, and he wrote a book. I'm going to show it to you in a, a couple of minutes. And I started, I bought the book, and I started reading it, and I'm reading about aloe vera, how it is the most healthful plant on the planet, right? So does anybody know where it first originated? That's a good guess. Can you be more specific than the desert? Arizona? Arizona? No. Mexico. How about Giza? That was the first place it was found. Think about that for a second, okay? So the most healthful plant on the planet just showed up around the pyramids in Giza. I think the aliens brought aloe vera here for us. It's their gift to us. If you don't use it, you're screwing up big time. Look at that. You can see the little plants at the bottom if you just look real close. Do you guys think that, that humans actually built this structure? No? That's good, because I brought proof that, uh, that they didn't. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to the, I'm gonna get to the proof pretty quickly, you know? I got, I'm going to accomplish a lot tonight. This is the book that I first read. It's called Heal Yourself 101 by Marcus Rothkrantz. <clears throat> He's an amazing guy. He's got a solution for anything. When, when there's something wrong with you, he'll tell you what plant you can go out into the woods and eat, and you'll be cured. And it actually works. He got me eating dandelions, aloe vera, and a whole bunch of other goofy stuff. And all I can tell you is this. You can believe whether it works or not. I was around uh, 35 when I started, when I first found this guy and read his book. I literally have not been sick in 20 years, except for when Larry gave me COVID, which <laughs> lasted a day and a half. And I wasn't even, I don't even believe I had it, to tell you the truth, because I felt wonderful. We, we, we drank a whole fifth of uh, whiskey the day that I found out I had COVID. That's how concerned I was about it. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> it's, a, it's an awesome book, and if you... This guy is like uh, a crazy genius, you know, and I'm attracted to crazy people. So uh, I think he's awesome. So in this book, he writes a lot about aloe vera, why you would want to eat it, okay? People usually say, oh, I love aloe. It makes my sunburn feel so much better. Come on. That's just nothing. That's nothing. That's like scratching the surface. You want to eat the plant, and I'm going to show you how to do that tonight. So, <clears throat> this is just, I'm going to read a paragraph. You guys haven't had enough of that yet tonight, right? So, let me just read a little bit. Aloe vera is one of the most amazing miracle food plants on the planet, right? It's so fantastic, it's like aliens put it here. I didn't write that part, right? It lasts forever and stores for months. If you cut it, it heals itself. You want to show me a plant that does that? It's a smart plant. It can tell the difference between normal cells, which it stimulates, and bad stuff like viruses, cancer, leukemia, HIV, which it stops from spreading in your body. It does all that, and all the heck you got to do is eat it, okay? So you guys are getting hungry, aren't you? Yeah. Anybody ever made you like an aloe vera pie? This is the proof, okay? Do you think an artist would have spent like months working on this drawing if this didn't really happen? Really, no artist would have done that. You can see this is a very fine artist. He's a very fine artist. He wouldn't have spent all that time 
if this isn't what really happened. This makes a lot more sense to me. How else would they have gotten those giant bricks up there? All right, what else do we got? So there's not a whole lot of books on aloe vera. I'm probably the only crazy guy who's ever read them all, all the ones I could find. This, this book was written by this father who traveled around in uh, South America, and he came up with this conclusion that, that one of the leaves from this plant, this is called an aloe arborensis, and what you do is you, he cuts off the leaf, and he puts in some whiskey, don't know why, and some honey, don't know why. The plant doesn't taste that bad. It's a little bit bitter, that's all. You don't need to soak it in honey and alcohol. But this is what he did, and he wrote an entire book about how he cured cancer for all these people in South America. Now, I'm sure the pharmaceutical companies would like for him to die so that, uh, you know, nobody would believe this, but... I figured, what the heck? So I found out where the seeds were, and I started growing this plant. But this is the most common aloe plant you will see, okay? This here, and we're going to eat some of it pretty soon, so everybody's getting excited. <laughs> okay, it's an ancient Egyptian medicinal plant. You want to use this. You want to use this, and we're going we're gonna to do it tonight. 6,000 years of medicinal history can't be wrong. What the pharmaceutical industry doesn't want you to know yet was common knowledge during Cleopatra's time. Cleopatra used to have her peeps go out, cut like a thousand of these leaves, put them in like a hot tub, and she would just swim around in it. Now, I wish I could do that. <laughs> I don't have that many plants at my house, but I'm going to show you the pictures of my plants. You can also buy aloe vera that's already, all the gel is already taken out of the plant and put into these jars. I don't really recommend it because it ends up sitting in these jars for a long time. You can go to a supermarket and buy this for two bucks. Two bucks, all right? You guys are getting hungry, I can tell, especially Bill, okay? So there's really two kinds of plants. Aloe vera barbarensis, which is what you're looking at here, is the most common one, and then the aborescence, which is a rare version that this father wrote a book about. So. Let's, <clears throat> let's see what I would do. Can I get a trash can up here? <clears throat> we're going we're gonna to eat some aloe vera and do a couple other things with it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I want it right off the plant. Drink it. I'm going to eat it. I told you I'm going to eat it. You're going to eat it. Angelina's going to eat it. So you're going to cut off the ends. We don't necessarily need those. I'm, if I'm doing this, I'm obviously doing this at home in my blender, right? I'm cutting off the ends. Then you just get your knife, and you're going to take off some of these thorns. Then you can see all the gel that's in there, right? Oh, this wonderful gel. And what you want to do with this is, yeah, it cures your sunburn. But that is just the beginning. What you want to do with this stuff is take a bath with it, okay? It's going to beautify you. Now, I've been telling you people that I'm 55 years old. I've been lying. I've been lying for quite a while. Works great on the back of your hands. It's antibacterial, so it's cleaning out your nails. It takes away those wrinkles. Oh, and if your hair isn't growing so well, put it right in there. All of it. Let's take this. Let's take this aloe right here. We want it all. We're not going to waste any of it, right? Now I'm just going to put it in this jar because I don't have a blender with me. If this will go in my smoothie tomorrow morning, guess what happens when you put a super slippery and incredibly nutritious gel in your smoothie? What do you think happens? You, you just go, ha! Ah. It's that easy. And I've heard Paul in the bathroom before, so I think he should come up here and start eating some of this stuff. 
Would anybody like to come up and get a peach and start wiping? Beautiful. <laughs> Anyone want to come up here and wipe some of this on yourself? Well, normally I would eat it in a blender when I put it together with some stuff. But help yourself. Go ahead, just take a piece and check it out. I'll put it in my hair. Who wants to eat some? I do. Okay, there you go. Take a thing. Well, I'm going to show you. So I'm just getting rid of these any pieces, right? This stuff feels great. So right now my face is like soaking wet, my hair is soaking wet, but I don't care. When it dries, it feels phenomenal. It's like a mask, okay? Girls, the only problem you're gonna have with aloe vera is if you start using this, girls are gonna be hitting on you. Morning, noon, and night. And I just, I tell them all the time, look, I'm, <laughs> I tell them all the time, I'm like, look ladies, I'm married. You know, I'm, don't, don't make me stop using aloe vera, right? So, wipe this stuff on your face, grab a piece of it. I'm gonna scoop the gel out of this one because we're gonna need it tomorrow. Just help yourself, just grab one. Anybody, put your hands in there and just grab it. I'm like uh, Julia Childs at the moment, I can't help you. Right? So I never waste this stuff. People come over to my house and they go, why do you got all this aloe vera all over the place? And I go, well, let me show you. How much do you put in a blender every day? How much? A, a whole leaf. A whole leaf, right? Hey, Phil. Yeah. You need some on your elbows. I need some what? You need some on your elbows. Thank you. Those are rough. Been arm crawling all day. This? Cleopatra used to use this instead of hair gel. She didn't have any. Supermarket didn't have any. Okay. Boy, I look good. I feel good, too. Just to show you that I would eat this stuff. Uh-huh. Normally, I would mix it up with some blueberries, some bananas. Uh, I have, I have seasonal allergies, so I use bee pollen. I put bee pollen in my blender, mix it together with the bananas, the blueberries, right? And I cured myself of lifelong allergies. Mm mm mm. You don't know what you're missing, buddy. Maybe you do. <laughs> I'm the I'm the only Egyptian here and I've never ever heard about this ever. <laughs> Most people if uh, they would hear about eating aloe vera, a lot of people just were like, "Oh my god, I'm not going to do that," right? There's a lot of health solutions in this world that have nothing to do with pharmaceuticals. Okay, people have a problem with their digestion, for example. If you, <clears throat> so if you eat this stuff like I do, okay, you, there's no straining or anything. It's just like, ha, ah, right? You feel terrific. You feel, oh, look, like, your gut is super important, all right? It's a huge part of, <clears throat> right, a, a lot of people call the gut the second brain because it processes everything that goes through your body. And if you don't take care of it, this super slippery stuff. Like, wipe this stuff on your hands and then try, try to have a football catch with somebody, okay? It's a mess. You can't hold anything. All these people that got diverticulitis and all these problems in their guts, you can solve it just by eating an aloe vera leaf. You don't even taste it. I mean, I, I'm tasting it now. It's a little bit bitter if you just eat it, like, out of the jar. I was just showing you I could eat it. When you put it together with bananas and, and, and stuff, you don't taste nothing. You don't taste nothing, you just drink it right down. It feels great. And for me, I add bee pollen because I have seasonal allergies. But if you have a specific problem, find a natural solution to your problem and add it to your smoothie. Make your own medicine, okay? 20 years I haven't been sick except when stupid Larry gave me COVID, okay? Well, 20 years, okay? It's his damn fault. I should make him eat the freaking aloe vera. Yes. 
<laughs> bead pollen, you can buy it online, but the best place to buy it is you want to buy it from a farmer's market that's near where you live. That way, the pollen that's bothering you, you start eating it. Not like the vaccine that's not a vaccine. <clears throat> I'm not talking about the so-called vaccine that's probably designed to kill people more than it is anything else. It's the depopulation vaccine, actually. <laughs> but let's not get too crazy right now, Angelina. Don't be sending me down these paths, okay? What you want to do is you want to go to a farmer's market near where you live. People who make bee pollen, well, the bees, of course, make it. The, the people who own the farm, they just help the bees, okay? The bees are magical. They're amazing little creatures. And everything that they make is wonderful. Bee pollen, if you just eat some of it, put a little bit in. Like I would put maybe like a tablespoon in the beginning. I put now, I just pour it in there. Uh, I don't really worry about it. I don't even, I used to have the worst allergy attacks. I would get an allergy attack um, once every 10 days for half a day. I would lose half a day because I'd be sneezing the whole damn day, right? And, and when I read this guy's book, this was just one of the things. Forget about the aloe, the bee pollen. I read that, I thought, that's genius. Well, I, I ran out, I bought some, I started eating it, cured, boom. I mean, not 100% not cured, I'll still like once in a while feel a little stuffy, but for the most part, I'm like one-tenth of what the suffering I used to go through. Thank you, bees. Okay, let's keep going. These are the only two types you want to eat, okay? There's a bunch of, there's like 50 different versions of every plant on the planet. So be careful, make sure that you're eating these. And these, these are the only ones you're going to see in the supermarket anyway. I have over 300 aloe vera plants in my house. This is my uh, room where I keep all of my plants, okay? Some of them are full size and producing leaves like this big, but... Um, Typically, I eat them before they ever get this big. So when, when they're like almost that big, I just start eating them, right? Why go to the supermarket when I can get one that's alive? You want to eat things that are alive, okay? So <clears throat> I'll, I'll go out to my garden, and I got a, a plant out there called a Gynama Procom, which is supposed to be a blood cleanser, and it's listed in the top five uh, most healthiest plants on the planet. And I go out and I pick like 50, 60 leaves off of it. I chuck it in the blender, the bee pollen, the bananas, the blueberries, the whole bit. I feel phenomenal. I haven't been sick in 20 years except for Larry, <laughs> which I'm never going to get over. All right? Uh, let's see what else I got. Here's another picture. Do anyone know what these boxes are with the plants coming out of it? Anybody know what these are? They're, they're cloning I'm cloning plants. So if you have a plant, I wish you could do this for marijuana, but <laughs> you can't. But certain plants, you can cut the stem off and you stick the plant right in this box, which sort of, it's like a little coconut core in there. And it just holds the plant above the water, right? And you put a fish filter on the bottom and the bubbles on the top of the water tease the plant. Plants are so intelligent that when the bubbles are popping and a little bit of sprinkle of water is touching the bottom of the plant, the plant's roots come out of a stem that you just cut and reaches into the water. It's amazing. And once it has roots, guess what you can do with it? Plant it. Take it out and put it in a regular pot and plant it. So. Imagine if you have a plant that's, that's really healthy for you and you're growing it in your house, you could clone it, okay? I'd like to clone me, but I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Phil, like if you cloned movie. yourself, would you wrestle with yourself in aloe vera? No, I... <laughs> <laughs> no. Just curious. No, I, I, would do, uh, <laughs> I would do what Michael Keaton did in that movie. You know? <laughs> Hold the <play> <laughs> Okay, what else do I got here? Okay, let's get into some more serious stuff besides the aloe vera. I came to talk to you a little bit more about things besides aloe vera, okay? I first saw this video that this guy got all dressed up for 
on Extreme Health Radio. And the video is titled, Dr. Bob Dowling, Root Canals are the Cause of All Cancer. I listened to this video, it's like an hour and a half long, fascinating information, right? If you've had a root canal, this is something you really want to watch. You want to learn about this, and you most likely want to get that root canal out. I don't care if it's your front tooth, you want to get it out. Dr. Mercola, is a, this, this is, that's the other guy in the video, his, his video is called Root Canals Are Extremely Toxic. Okay, this is from Dr. Mercola. You are lied to by your doctors. You're lied to by your government. You're lied to by your pharmaceutical companies. You have to become your own doctor. YouTube, look, I hate Google, okay? I hate Facebook. I hate them all, all right? But, but anytime I need to know something, I can go to YouTube, type it in, and I know it in 15 minutes, all right? So it's an amazing website, even if I hate the individuals who, cre who created it, who, who bought it, actually. They bought it, right? You can watch these two videos. It gives you, Dr. Mercola's video gives you solutions. So if you have a root canal and you have to rip it out, you have to get it taken out of your mouth, he'll give you all the solutions of how you can replace your teeth and have a normal looking mouth and a healthy mouth, okay? So this is really important stuff. Root canals are extremely dangerous. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it. I read this book called The Root Canal Cover-Up by Jock, Dr. George Mining. George Mind, you know what an endodontist is? Root canals. Guys who do root canals, they're called endodontists, okay? This guy, George Mining, was the president of the United States uh, Endodontist Association. And he realized how toxic and dangerous root canals were. And he wrote this book, which got him kicked out of the association and revoked his license, but he wrote the book anyway, okay? But he didn't even come up with the concept. The concept came from Dr. Weston Price in 1915. Now, would you believe that something happened 120 years ago and you're just finding out about it now because it, they can't make any money off of it, okay? That's all it's about. They make money off of, you know what dentists do? Drilling. Filling and billing, that's, the, that's what they do, okay? Drilling, filling, and billing. Obviously, they make a lot of money off of it. They can charge you thousands of dollars to extract your root canal, which would be the only thing I really want to, would want to go to a dentist. I actually had one root canal, and I happened to stumble upon this video, this video. I listened to it like three times. I could not believe what I was hearing. So let me tell you why a, a root canal is dangerous, okay? Essentially what a root canal endodontist does is he goes in and he drills out the nerves, okay? He drills out the nerves, he drills out any blood vessels that are in there, and he clogs it up with like plastic, these plastic straws. If you've ever had a root canal, they're inserting these long skinny straws into your tooth canal. Then they cut them off in a sort of like uh, heat it up to seal it, right? And it's supposed to be sealed. What it really is, is a dead body part. There is no surgical procedure on the planet where a doctor goes, ah, oh, his liver is dead, but let's just leave it in there. Okay, They're, they don't do that anywhere. Okay, so what happens to this tooth? In, in the immediate time after you've gotten a root canal, you're probably okay for a little while if it's sealed. But if you took a tooth out, any kind of molar, and you cut it in half, and you looked at it under a microscope, a tooth has as much as three miles of microscopic tubing inside of the dentin, the soft part of the tooth inside the middle of the tooth, okay? What happens is now there's no blood flow. So your immune system can't get there to clean it. Your immune system knows there's an infection there, but it can't do anything about it because it can't get to it because it's a sealed thing. And what happens is that the bacteria will ultimately get into it after a couple of years. And what happens next? You've got one of the most dangerous kind of bacteria there is. It's called anaerobic bacteria. And that stuff will run right through your bodies. Now, I don't want to get too crazy on this. I'm going to keep moving, but... Let's just say that there's something called the Chinese Meridian Chart. Look it up on anywhere on the internet. Look it up. 
If you have a number, there's a number for every tooth. So if your tooth is a root canal and you don't take it out, you can actually go to the Chinese meridian chart. By the way, this chart was created 2,000 years ago. Haven't heard of that one though, have you? Haven't heard about that yet. Yeah, right. Because we suppress all of our own history, all of the genius of the human beings. We suppress it all so we can make money. Okay? So welcome to the current world we live in. I looked up the tooth that I had a root canal in, which is the number two. I believe that was the number. The tooth that I had extracted. I had to call four dentists to get the tooth taken out of my mouth. I'm like, what do you, what do you care? I'm not going to sue you. I'm begging you to take it out. Nobody will take it out. Right? They numb you up. They get a pair of pliers. They literally pull your tooth out. You, get, you got a bit of a headache for a week or something, right? And then you got to go through the process of replacing the tooth if you want to. But a lot of molars, like a number two, you don't have to. The Chinese meridian chart, I go to look to see what teeth are connected to organ parts. I, can, I don't have time to explain it all. Guess what the organ was that was connected to my number two tooth? The pancreas. The pancreas, meaning like, hey, I could get pancreatic cancer, okay? So I wanted that damn thing ripped out of my mouth as quickly as possible. And I did it years ago, all right? There's a lot to learn about this. So Dr. Weston Price, this guy was a genius, okay? 120-something years ago, he should have won the Nobel Prize. What he did was he went to, like, indigenous populations, and he ends up in Switzerland. He finds this little town on the top of a mountain in Switzerland, and in Switzerland, they got a lake on the top of a mountain. And what do they do there? They're all farmers, and they're making, like, butter, and they're eating a lot of, they got a lot of cod, right? And so they're eating cod out of this lake, and they're eating butter. Well, guess what cod oil has, and uh, cod liver oil, and butter oil. Guess what it has? Cholesterol, omega-3. Omega vitamin A. Tremendous amounts of vitamin A. Guess what vitamin A does? Heals your teeth. So if you've got some kind of decay in your teeth, <clears throat> you can buy this cod liver oil and with a combination of butter oil. And I'll show you a picture of what it looks like. Here it is. This is the stuff that I use. It's called green pasture fermented cod liver oil and concentrated butter oil. You keep it in your refrigerator. You just go in there with a teaspoon. Get a teaspoon of it every day. Put it in your mouth. It's like, uh, it's like wax. almost looks like wax. You could leave it outside of a fridge, but then it would be liquid, right? So you just get a little teaspoon of it, put it in your mouth. If you've got any decay in your mouth, forget going to the dentist, forget the drilling, billing, and filling. Just buy this stuff for 50 bucks, put, use it every day, and your decay, will, your teeth will actually heal themselves right for you, okay? Amazing stuff. It's loaded with, you know, if you've got amalgam in your mouth, that means you open up your mouth and you look at yourself, and if you see metal in there, you've got to get that stuff out. That stuff's got mercury in it. You got to get that stuff out. And don't get a root canal and take out the root canals that you have. Okay? If your dentist says, why would you want to take out a, that tooth you needed to chew? What's more important is that you live, not that you can chew. Okay? That, to me, that would be more important. All right. A couple other things that I do. Um, I don't know if any of you guys know who Dr. Joel Furman is. He's on Channel 12 a lot. He came up with this nutrient density chart, right? Where he gave a value to all the food. So you can see some of the numbers on here. Like an apple's 87, a salmon is 71, right? And you'll notice like the highest thing is kale, okay? Well, later on, I'm watching this uh, YouTube video by a woman named uh, Dr. Rhonda Patrick. I don't know if anybody knows her. She, she's kind of like all over the place. She goes on Joe Rogan. She's on a bunch of shows. Ladies like a uh, super genius, right? She started studying um, sulfurophane. Sulfurophane is what comes from broccoli sprouts, okay? These, this is a picture I took this morning of my broccoli sprouts, which I keep in the freezer. So I grow these in a jar, right? And then I'll cut off like a sliver of my broccoli sprouts, like a, like a thick chunk, almost like a hamburger size, about that big. I roll it up like, you know, it almost, it's a bag about like that in my freezer. 
and I'll just carve off a big chunk and I chuck that in my smoothie. Okay? So recently, um, I had uh, not a, this wasn't a root canal, but I had one of my teeth taken out, right? And I got, I went back to my dentist and he looked at my teeth and he said, I don't know, uh, I looked at my teeth and my gums and the implant that he's, he put a post in there so we can put a tooth on top of it, right? And he says to me, well, I don't know what you're doing, but keep doing it. And I thought, why don't you want to know what I'm doing? Why, what, what are you, so freaking smart that uh, no one can teach you anything, right? Like some guy, your patient in a chair can never teach you anything. They're, they're, they're so high and mighty. They don't even ask you anything. They just tell you what they're what pills you're going to take. They don't say, would you like to take this pill? They just write your script and hand it to you and go, take this pill. Okay, what else do we got? Broccoli sprouts are off the chart, by the way. The reason they're not on this chart is because Dr. Joel Furman, I guess, never figured out a way to test them, but they're supposedly broccoli sprouts have the most nutrition in them of anything on this chart. Yes, Paul? I know Furman. I, I actually did his diet about... 10 or 15 years ago and it was like I was in the best health of my life from it <laughs> but he's right in Flemington yeah he's a yeah. local guy yeah, you can local. actually go to his, mm -hmm. you can go to his uh, office. medical office mm -hmm. he was also on that movie uh, fat sick and nearly dead or sick fat and nearly dead I forget which order it went in okay what else do we got okay I follow a guy named Chris B cancer anybody know him Okay, I don't have cancer, but my mother had it twice. So, and I helped my mother once when she was in her 30s and then again when she was in her mid-50s. And I lost my mother, not to cancer, but to the treatment of cancer, okay? The doctors told her that she needed a pill called tamoxifen, which is a radiation pill. And I begged my mother not to take that stupid pill. I said, you, you freaking cut off your breast, then give you, then rebuild your breast. Then they did, then they radiate you. And they do all this crap to you. What the hell do you need this pill for? But she just, you know, she believed her doctor. Her doctor knew everything. She didn't. Um, this guy, Dr. Patrick Vickers, was introduced to me from Chris Beat Cancer. Chris Beat Cancer. His name's Chris Work. The guy, he's a young guy who got cancer when he was 18 years old. He decided to, very religious guy, decided to dedicate his life to finding out everything he could about cancer. He searches the world for people who have naturally cured cancer, and there's tons of them. If you follow his blog, you should check them out. He has a package he sells for like 150 bucks. It has so much information in it. I put it on my YouTube, I, I put it on my iPod, and I listen to it when I'm in the gym, right? And I get like cancer tips whenever it comes up in the feed. It's just mixed together with music, right? Dr. Patrick Vickers, I begged my mom to go to Mexico to see this guy. They charge $6,000 a week. Keep in mind, like Fox Chase Cancer Center cost $300,000 average cost per cancer patient. Dr. Patrick Vickers in Mexico charges $6,000 for a week. My mom's like, save your money. I'm like, forget save the money. I want to save my mom. I don't want to save my money. I said, I'll go with you. I'll I'll bring whoever you want to come. Let's go. What? Yeah, it's right on a beach. There, his, his, uh, his institute is right on a beach. It's called the Northern Baja Gorson Institute. In Guadalajara, Mexico, they pick you right up at the San Diego airport. If you know anybody who gets cancer, all I can tell you is that's where I'm going. Okay? There's all kinds of videos of this guy on, on YouTube. You can actually watch him talking to patients, uh, giving them when they first get to the hospital, when they leave the hospital. If you know somebody you care about, we live in a poisonous world. You've got to be smarter than the average Joe. You can't just walk into a doctor's office and take whatever crap they tell you to take because that's really what you're taking is crap. You've got to be smarter. You've got to find the, the intelligent people. And guess where they all are? They ain't in America. They are not here because if they do, if they break the protocol of pushing the pharmaceutical drugs, then they're out of here. They revoke their licenses. So the smartest, best doctors in the world are now no longer in the greatest country. 
Now, they're in Mexico. They're in South America. They're in Ecuador. They're in all these different places, okay? Hopefully, they're in Belize, because that's where I'm planning to go soon. Um, the, be smart. I hope you guys have learned something from this. And to your health. Let's do it. Questions for Phil. Quick question. Quick questions. Anyone? Andrew has a question. Do you, uh, what do you put in your smoothies? You said, like, do you mix it with water or milk or what do you do? Uh, I have a, how about this? How about this? I have a machine called a Berkey, which purifies my water. So in my house, I have a, uh, a reverse osmosis system which you can buy from Amazon for a couple hundred dollars and the filters cost you a hundred dollars every six months. And then I use, that water gets fed into a Berkey, which is a gravity fed drip machine to supposedly clean out pathogens. So I've got all this equipment I don't really know. I, I don't really have a method to test the water, test the pH levels and all that stuff, but I just put water in the smoothies. What, what do you got here anyway? What do you think all this is? This is just water, okay? It rains, it goes through the soil, it picks up the minerals, it picks up the elements, it gets sucked into this wonderful, amazing plant, and you eat the plant. So the, 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 the minerals and the elements and whatever vitamins are in there, it all goes right into your body. It's a, it's a perfect system. Trust nature, don't trust man. Boom! <laughs>